Hey, welcome back to Laser Engraving 911. So on this short tutorial, we're going to be laser engraving some mini Yeti style shot glasses using Brilliance Laser Ink and some dental putty. So if that sounds like something you want to get into, then buckle up, get your pen and paper out, because we're about to get into it on Laser Engraving 911. Okay, so here's the situation. Customer brought me a bunch of these mini Yeti shot glasses that they got and they're brushed stainless steel and they're going on a vacation and they want me to engrave their custom homemade logo on each one of these as kind of a party favor. What I noticed is that they're, they're really lightweight and they're not gonna sit in my rim drive rotary tool and I also don't wanna do one at a time. So what I thought, and I've done this before with other cups, is somehow if I can take these two lids and glue them together without gluing them together because I don't want to ruin the lids or use tape or anything, then what I have is kind of a fixture that holds two of them at once. And then I can actually do two of these in the rotary at once. Now you might ask yourself, why can I not just do one? Well, let me show you. First of all, I wouldn't want to do one because time is money, right? And if I can do two at a time, that's even better. So if I do just try to do one and bring my rotary over, there's not going to be enough weight for it to spin it. And the chances of it slipping in here are high and I don't want to do that. And the little clamp that goes in there that is usually on my rotary is probably not going to hold it down because the opening's so small. So by putting two of them together, we have more weight and we're spending less time on the project. So now all we have to do is figure out a way to join these two lids together that is non-permanent. So what I came up with is dental putty. This I've talked about before on the channel. This is a quick setting polymer dental putty. And I mean quick set, like under, under five minutes. It's a two part putty and it basically solidifies like rubber when it's done. Equal parts, right? Or close to equal. That one goes in there. Set that off to the side. We're gonna mix this up really good until it's all one light blue color. And you can roll it around you only have a limited amount of time to work with this. You see how it's all blending into one color? That's pretty good. Probably too much. So I'm just going to take like that much. I'm going to roll it into a ball, set it right in here. And I'm going to just smash these two together really tight and keep it nice and even and make sure that this is even all the way around. And you see how it actually smashed through the little straw holes there. That's actually a good thing because that means that when it dries, that's actually going to help these stay together. So in about five minutes, that's going to be completely bonded together and it doesn't leave any residue. When I need to take it apart, I can just rip these pieces off and then I have perfect lids that have no adhesive on them. And what I ended up with, because I already did this, was that right there. And that's already dried and that's, you can see that's rigid. <laughs> it's not coming off. And then when I need to go and do these, Put them on one at a time, set them in my rotary, and I'm ready to go. Okay, so one of the things that I like to do before I use Brilliance Laser Ink on stainless steel tumblers is I like to make sure that the surface is clean. And the best way that I found to do that is to get yourself a little mini torch and just very quickly go over the surface that you're about to apply the spray to until you don't see any vapors anymore. As I'm doing it, you'll see right away there's like fog and then there's no fog. And what that's doing is that's burning away any grease, oil, or anything left over from the factory. It just takes literally seconds. I go all the way around, just like that. And those are going to take the Brilliance laser spray a hundred times better than if you didn't clean the surface. All fingerprints, everything just gets removed. And you definitely, once you clean these off, you do not want to touch them afterwards because then you're just going to be putting grease right on there. You want the surface of these to be as clean as possible. So you definitely want to always shake up your can 
for about a minute. And then you don't have to use this, but I have this little rotating table that allows me to kind of move it evenly. And I like to hold the can about a foot away, maybe a little bit less. I don't go right up on it. And I'm just trying to basically coat the side that I'm gonna work on. So I'm only gonna be working in kind of that motion right there, so. And that's it. You really don't need much more than that. And I can go ahead and touch this part since we're not engraving that. And I'm just gonna set it aside. And you'll notice it's wet right now, but when it dries, it'll dry like snow white and you'll know you're ready to go. And you don't wanna have any drips. All right, and that's it. Now, one thing I forgot to do is I should have brought a little tray to set them on so I could bring them all inside to dry. So I'm gonna go get a little piece of wood just to set them on so I can bring them all in at once. So once I'm done spraying stainless steel cups, I usually like to bring them in. If there's room, I'll set it down inside of my laser cavity to help speed up the drying process dramatically. I'll close the lid and I'll just turn on the fume extractor just so there's lots of air flowing through there. The cups will be dry in like under five minutes and then I'm ready to go. All right, so here we are over at Adobe Illustrator and I wanted to just briefly show you the file that I set up so I could be able to engrave two of these Yeti style shot glasses at once. Here is the customer's logo. And what I did here, we'll zoom in here, is I created two spaces that are the exact height or the width of the engravable area. And then I also drew this shape here to represent where the two lids that we glued together and the thickness of those. And then within these boxes, I orientated the logo to make sure that it didn't go all the way to the top of the Yeti shot glass and not all the way to the bottom. And I reversed it and did the opposite side here. When I load this into my rotary tool, I'm just gonna use center center and I'm gonna set my red laser right here. And if everything lines up correctly, then those logos should land exactly where they need to be. The other thing that I had to do is because if you notice the bottom of the shot glass is tapered, the diameter is smaller, the part that will be riding on the rim drive. So I had to actually do some calculations and squash the logo and if you want to know how I did these calculations I'll list a link in the description below so you can get my calculation guide for working with tapered drinkware objects I've talked about this in another video before there's a link right up above there if you want to watch that this is the original graphic here and then I used my calculation sheet to squash the graphic appropriately so it comes out looking normal on the shot glasses so I think at this point, we're ready to go over and actually start laser engraving these. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, come on over here. <laughs> I just finished showing you what we did on Adobe Illustrator. Here's the graphic brought into Corel Draw, and I'm gonna use my settings on the epilogue that I like to use for this particular product. Your settings on your laser may be different. So make sure you check with the Brilliance Laser Ink suggested power and speed settings specific to your machine. We've got the rotary set up, we've already focused. Now we're gonna grab our little double jig that we made. And one thing I forgot to do, yep, I make mistakes too, is that I oversprayed onto the part that was going to ride on the rim drive and you don't want that to happen because that will make it slip. You don't want any powder on these nice rubber wheels here. Make sure you wipe that off, the part that's resting on the wheels. So I'm gonna grab one of my cups. I'm gonna grab another one, put it right here. Very carefully put it in here and just lay it right there and you can see my center center point, my red laser is right on that seam in between the two cups. So we get a nice even engraving. Maybe that helps better explain what we showed in Adobe Illustrator. That was the representation of the area that my logo can fit in. We're all focused. We're on center, center engrave. We're gonna turn on the fume extractor, which is kind of loud here. I think we're ready to run the job. So let's go ahead and run it.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Laser Engraving 911. I'll list links in the description below on where you can get yourself some Brilliance Laser Ink. If you have some stainless steel projects that you'd like to engrave with your CO2 laser, it's my go-to laser marking spray. You know, if you ever get some jobs for some miniature Yetis, you know, now you know that you can do them on the CO2 laser and you can do two at a time. And a lot of the applications that we use in this video can be applied to other types of cups as well. Next time you get a large batch of 20 ounce cups, you could also bond those lids together if they stay on tight enough and you could potentially do two cups at a time. So if you got value out of this video, make sure you smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already to this channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. And also leave a comment below if you've got any fresh laser hacks when it comes to laser engraving cups, maybe doing multiple cups at a time, or what you like to do with your rotary tool. So until next time, I'll see you around on Laser Engraving 911.